Hey there. So, if you've been following tech news, you might have heard that Indonesia has banned the sale of Apple's iPhone 16. But what does that really mean for you and for Apple? It's a pretty interesting story, and we're going to break it down today. First off, let's talk about the reason behind this ban. Basically, Apple's local unit didn't meet Indonesia's investment requirements. They promised to invest about $109 million in local development, but they've only put in around $95 million so far. That's missing the mark, right? What's more, Indonesia has strict rules that require companies like Apple to have at least 40% of their components sourced locally. That's quite a hefty expectation. So, this ban essentially means no iPhone 16 sales until Apple fulfills that requirement. Ouch. Now, you might be wondering, how does that affect you, the consumer? Well, for starters, it's a significant inconvenience. You can still bring in iPhone 16s for personal use, but you can't buy them locally. So, if you're an Apple fan living in Indonesia, that's a real bummer. Indonesia is home to over 350 million active smartphones. That's a massive market, and believe it or not, more than 100 million of those users are under 30 years old. This is a tech-savvy nation with a hungry market for new devices. So, missing out on this could hurt Apple a lot in terms of sales. So, what's Apple doing about it? Tim Cook visited Indonesia not too long ago, hoping to make things work better in the future. But without a solid commitment to local production, they're really putting themselves at risk in this growing market. The irony is that brands like Xiaomi and Samsung have already set up shop in Indonesia, meeting those local content requirements. This creates a competitive edge for them. And let's face it, right now, Apple is playing catch-up. Looking ahead, what are the stakes for Apple? If they don't change course, they risk alienating a lucrative market that could have huge potential for sales. And with the Malaysian market approving new software features like Apple Intelligence, could this spell trouble for Apple's reputation? For consumers, choices are key. With iPhone 16 not being legally sold in Indonesia, many are turning to other alternatives. This could lead to a shift in brand loyalty. Potentially, some fans might look for more accessible options that meet their needs without the hassle. It's tough, isn't it? Many longtime Apple fans feel let down. It's not just about the device. It's about the community and loyalty these brands build. What will it take for Apple to regain that trust? Apple has always been synonymous with innovation, but they must not forget that meeting local regulations is just as crucial as premium design and user experience. Remember, sometimes it's the behind-the-scenes work that keeps a brand thriving in competitive markets. So, to sum it up, Apple's absence in Indonesia is a huge missed opportunity at a time when they could really use a boost, especially amid slowing growth in China. If you found this breakdown helpful, I encourage you to share your thoughts. What do you think? Should Apple take more steps to meet local demands? This channel is all about building a community where we can exchange ideas, insights, and opinions about the tech world. Your feedback can help us improve our future videos. Hit that like button, subscribe, and let's keep the discussion going on tech's impact on our lives. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate your support. And don't forget to check out the comments section below. I love hearing what you have to say. Your insights are valuable to this channel. Together, we can shape the future of tech conversations.